G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I'm gonna to be playing with Collage Club for June 2022. I'm gonna make a whole illustration and then I'm going to, well, I'm gonna make a whole collage, then I'm gonna illustrate it. I've already done a voiceover for this, but uh, fun fact, I deleted it <laughs> with a whole bunch of other stuff I was clearing from my phone. So I've already done this, so I don't know what I told you in the last one and how this is gonna be different, but I'm gonna step you through it anyway. I've edited it and it's on the screen. I struggled with that word last time too. Uh, it's on the screen, so I'm going to live react to it and just kind of tell you what's happening, put my face up in the square, up in the corner, and we can uh, watch this come together. So like I said, this was Collage Club June 2022. I used this whole kind of journal page, like journal bits and pieces. They're meant to be like builder blocks, like pieces you can kind of collage into bigger things or you can just make a border out of them. Look, most of my Collage Club pieces for me become decorative in my planner or my five view journal and stuff like that only because they come from journals. So I feel like it's double handling to put them back into the journal unless I'm doing it in some kind of transformative way like a collage. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm doing today. I took the big long neck lady from that French themed sheet and I have decided to place kind of a headdress. I wanted the whole thing to be covered except for the little part of her face. So you can see I'm really coming in on the face there and putting some of those pieces really close. Building the head uh, headpiece taller rather than wider, I just kind of wanted to fill out the length of that page. These are printed on matte photo sticker paper, just matte sticker paper, but I print photos on them all the time. Uh, and I print them on there and use my Silhouette Portrait 3 to cut them. So essentially they just become a big US letter size sheet of stickers, which is amazing for me because when I do collage, I don't have to worry about glue. So that's why you can see it's kind of all just stuck down there. There's no gluing or anything. And I just trim pieces as I need them. They're fully adhesive on the back. You can see me peeling it off there. It's so much nicer for me to work this way uh, with collage sheets. I use them so much more printing them and, and getting them through the silhouette this way. It's a bit of an investment to set up. I think my silhouette was $180 and my printer is just a Canon MX922. So you could use a regular inkjet printer. Those papers, I get mine from onlinelabels.com. They generally run pretty cheap if you buy a ton of them. But yeah, it is a bit of an investment. I'm not gonna say it's the cheapest way to do things. I think the cheapest way would just be to print it on copy paper and glue it, but it's not what I do. <laughs> I was gonna give you a big speech about, no, 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 I just don't do that. I do this and I love it. So I'm putting all the pieces on, snipping up the last few pieces to kind of make them fit. I love the color story of this sheet. I think, I don't know if you'll have seen collage, you probably have seen Collage Club, uh, like the sheets by this point. Uh, this one I chose a color pencil palette for. I used some watercolor as well. And it had that eye motif. And I just love how it turned out. And I wanted to use every single piece on this, which I managed to do. And it was kind of a feat trying to get it all to fit. But especially to frame the face, I just wanted it to, just for her face to pop out. And eventually I did, I think it's the next step, I did grab one of the other little characters from the Collage Club set and decided to put that on the front and be there it is there. Because she's got that kind of rounded back, it looked like like a mother, like a pregnant mother holding a baby, but the baby is born. I, I don't know. Maybe she's pregnant and she has another kid. <laughs> but it leads me into this kind of thing that happens when I'm art journaling in that I sometimes get these like feelings and emotions and thoughts provoked by the actual process of doing it, doing the art. Um, a lot of people go in thinking with an idea and then trying to bring that idea to life. And I think that's quite common. And I've done that a bunch of times as well, but I tend to find myself a little bit more stressed in that process, especially like I notice it a lot when I'm doing my five year journal, because I am doing art that's supposed to be related to something that actually happened. And when I'm thinking so literally, I have a hard time Think, like trying to translate conceptually and being more imaginative with it. My brain gets kind of horse blinders on and all I can think of is the most literal depiction of what I'm talking about. So I have these techniques like collage and illustration, stamp and illustration, um, you know, these kind of abstract puzzle play type things that help me create something super imaginative that I could never think of just off the top of my head. Um, but also in doing that process, because they can be so abstract, many other ideas can kind of float to the surface. And this is what I love about art journaling this way. Not that I think either is better, but in this process, I am enjoying 
the creativity, the play. I, I have set such a low goal here in just collaging this together. And I was actually really happy when this was done. I was just going to leave it, but I felt like actually drawing it because that's the thing. When you have a good time, you want to keep going. So I put it all together. You can see me just filling in some of those white border trim bits with the pencils that I use to make the collage bits. So um, they all kind of blend together and a bit, it's a bit more harmonious of a collage. Uh, but when I put it together and it kind of gave me these ideas of motherhood and of like parenting and children and those kind of ideas, I'll just allow myself to reflect on them as I'm doing it. It's definitely not what I set out to do. Some people might call it fate or destiny that like that maybe comes up because you've got things that you want to think about or that's a good healthy way to process things. I don't read too much into anything, but I do believe that it is just a really nice way for me to have that meditative, reflective kind of process in art, rather than trying to make art that is a reflection of that process. Does that make sense? I guess I'm just kind of flipping it around. <laughs> the idea comes after, not before, which is scary for some people because what if the idea doesn't show up? Now, there are plenty of times where I just play and there's no idea that shows up. There's nothing that really comes from it. Or if it does, it's like really comical or silly or stupid. But I validate those just as much as I do this kind of heavier concept of parenting and the, you know, a maternal nature, things like that. Like, I don't have maternal nature. <laughs> I'm not a woman, and I'm not a mother, <laughs> but I think of children and then I think of my nephews and nieces and things like that. So I, yeah, I think it's easier for me to let those ideas kind of brew in that process and then meditate on them as they're happening. It's not to say that I won't, you know, think of an idea and try to bring that to fruition, but generally that causes me just a touch more stress and the expectations get a little bit more out of hand that way because I am expecting to deliver on something, a thought or a concept that I've got in my head. And that's just always a bit more of a challenge than just doing something and making it whatever it needs to be in the end or nothing. Does that make sense? I hope that makes no sense <laughs> since I've just raved on for five minutes about it. Anyway, I took a platinum carbon ink fountain pen and decided to, it's waterproof, so I decided to draw the whole thing out and then watercolor it. So this is that collage and illustration process. When I'm doing this, I'm not trying to draw it exactly as I see it. I'm referencing it. So I'll reference the shapes and then I'll reference the colors. I might not, I might just halfway through it, get a little creative frenzy and just go and draw something completely different. Maybe it just stimulates the first part of my process or maybe I'm just using it, <clears throat> pun me, as reference to create something new and I only take like a small portion of it. Or maybe I just use it for color palette reference. I mean, whatever you decide to extract from it and use, you know, you're just making a derivative and it's just the inspiration for the next thing, right? So I love it because I love to illustrate, I love to draw, I love to recreate something. And like I said before, I didn't have to challenge myself to think of this from the beginning. If you look at the page on the right, there is, I, I'm 100% certain that I could never have actually just drawn that with my brain. There was, there's no way I would never have made half the decisions to put certain shapes where they are or structure it all together the way it is just straight off the top of my head. So this is where that abstract puzzle play with like collage can be really stimulating for creative and imaginative aesthetics that you would never just be able to think up. They're to I just, visual recall is such a different part of your brain than puzzle play and like spatial awareness and reasoning. I'm saying that I'm not a scientist or like a brain surgeon or anything. So they might be in the same place, but to me <laughs> as an artist and where they are in my head, completely different. Um, so I decided to paint the whole thing using the same color palette. It was, it was very derivative, this piece. Um, but I loved it. I loved doing it. I did a bit of journaling afterwards. You'll see in some of the close ups. I didn't decide to share what that journaling was about. Cause it's very personal. If you do stop to read it, um, it's, you know, something I wouldn't encourage anyone having discourse about in the comment section because you know, this is a part of my journal, I guess, when I had done it, if I'm totally honest, I thought, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Now, and it's only my personal uh, belief that when I come online, I only want to share things with you that leave you feeling neutral or better. I never want to leave you feeling worse. And when I reflected on what I had written, and if someone had come to read that, there was a 100% chance that it could stimulate a lot of thoughts that left people feeling like really bad and there's enough of that in the world and I don't want to add to it so this becomes a really weird gray area with journaling and that's why I try to keep some of it separate but because I share almost everything that I do um, there's bound to be a bit of crossover sometimes so I do apologize if you stop to read that I'm not encouraging you to do it 
and uh, and yeah, it was just thoughts that had popped up when I was thinking about children. So that's that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed the voiceover, the little picture-in-picture -picture action. Here's the final piece. If you want to have a go at collaging this all together, you have those in your June Collage Club um, sheets. If you want to download those, print them, and get them together. I'll leave more information about Collage Club in the description box below if you want to join. It's only $5 a month, and I will see you another time soon. Bye.